In this lesson, you're going to learn five guitar licks in the style of Jimi Hendrix that are going to expand the way you look at the guitar and allow you to sound more experienced. So for this lick, the very first measure, it's really, they're really pickup notes. You have four sixteenth notes that's going to go two eanda, four and two four. Uh, so we're going. And I, I should mention, I'm thinking this in A, probably A minor. So we're going uh, one, two eanda, then switching into four four. And I'm taking this C here, which is a flat third, bending it up to. D, which is the fourth. Then coming back down to play A, rolling over to get this five. Then here's the trickiest part, is I'm gonna bend up on this G here. And then while I'm holding up, I'm gonna roll over and catch this seven on the next string. Uh, so this is a really cool trick. It's very unusual sounding. So you're bending up. Then I'm catching the note on the next string while it's up, so I'm already pre-bending it. Then I'm coming back down, and then playing this C here, which is the flat third, and then I'm bending up uh, this seven here, which is a D up to E, uh, up to the fifth. I'm putting a little vibrato to get this. Now, doing this is a little tricky, this, where you bend up, catch the next string, come back down. Uh, it's something you ha kind of have to keep doing over and over. Uh, I'm not, I don't do it a whole lot, so I don't hit it every time. Uh, you know, sometimes you just, like, it gets squirrely because, uh, you know, sometimes when you release, it, you know, doesn't catch on your finger right. But you can just sit there and go. Another place you can do that is, uh, it's actually easier, like if you were gonna go uh, up here, basically going from the first string to the second string, it's easier, I think. It's easier because uh, you're, you're bending up and then catching the note right under your third finger. I think that's a, that one's a little easier, uh, but from my lick, I was doing this one here. If you do it kind of a little sloppy uh, and real bendy, I think it sounds really cool and a lot of fun, and I think it sounds very Hendrix-like. This video is sponsored by Guitar Slip No More. Do you ever find yourself wearing a guitar strap while you're sitting down because you don't want the guitar to slip off your lap? Well, now you don't need to. This award-winning product was designed to be installed on your guitar in just seconds, and it eliminates the need for you to wear a guitar strap while you're sitting down. It comes in large and medium, and it fits quite a wide variety of guitars. If you're not sure what size that you need for your guitar, then they have a free consult service that can help you find the correct size. I like to use it while I'm teaching guitar lessons or recording guitar. So now I'm going to demonstrate this product. Here I have my, my Fender Stratocaster right here. I have my guitar slip no more. I just smack it right on there. It takes seconds to install. And, and you can take it off as easy as you can put it on, so it's not anything that has to be attached or glued or anything to your guitar. And I'm ready to go. My guitar is not gonna slip off. I, my, I have my foot propped up right now, but if I take this out, you know, uh, my guitar, it's, it's just not gonna slip. I can move all around. It is not going to slip off, which is awesome. I can even, if I'm standing, I can even almost put my legs straight down before the guitar will even slide off. So that's why I think this is fantastic. Just for, just for sitting around, recording, doing whatever you want to do. If you're sitting down, I think you want to have one of these. They are a lot of fun and easy to work with, and they come in a variety of different sizes, and it fits a lot of different guitars. If you're someone like me who doesn't want my guitar to slip off my lap, and I'm not interested in wearing a guitar strap while I'm sitting down, then you might want to consider this product from Guitar Slip No More. I can recommend this product because I use it and I enjoy it, and I think you will find it very useful as well. To purchase one, I put the link down in the description. All 
All right, for this lick, I wanted to make one a little easier. I think the first one is pretty tough with that weird bend. Uh, so this one, I think if, this is more of a beginner type of lick. So if you found the first one pretty challenging, I think you're gonna like this one. Uh, so what I'm doing, it's basically an E minor. Basically E minor pentatonic. And what we're doing here is we're doing two E's here. It's a dotted eighth note followed by sixteenth. Like going like one E and uh, Beat number two is G E E. And rhythm wise, it's two E and two E and. So you get this. And then on the end of three, I'm going. And depending on how I play this, sometimes I bend it up. Sometimes I, meaning I push up, and sometimes I pull down. For, for whatever reason, I've grown used to and enjoy pulling it down. I find that find it easier on my on my finger. So the first measure is going. The second measure is almost the same. I just change it up a little. It goes. So that's all there is to that lick. I, like I said, I think I consider that a beginner lick. It's enjoyable, fun to play, and sounds really cool. All right, this lick is also out of A. And what I'm doing in this one is demonstrating to me the most Hendrixy thing you can do. If you want to sound like Hendrix, it's these, uh, you're taking two notes that are beside each other, and then you're hammering on the lower string. So if I have on the fourth string seventh fret, and I play right beside on the third string seventh fret, when I play those two, I hammer on, I'm gonna be hammering on the fourth string ninth fret. Not this string, not the higher string, the lower string. And that sound to me is the most Hendrix thing probably that he does. And if you wanted to sound Hendrixy, then that's the, the thing that you want to do. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm starting with just playing the, the A here, and then I'm hitting the whole chord, the whole A major chord, bar chord. And then I'm doing a triplet going. And then I'm doing this fourth thing. triad up here at the end. That's an A, but then this is a uh, first inversion triad with C sharp E A. So you get this. Sounds very Hendrixy. And this this idea of playing two notes and then playing you know on the lower string, you can do it in A all over the neck. So I'm gonna show you some different places you can take that idea. You can do it down here. up here. Uh, this is, he famously does it here. Uh, you know, he kind of does it right in that area. Uh, I consider it second position A major. And then up here, you can go, uh, you can walk your way up. And then you can, you can then repeat things up here. You're basically just doing what I was doing down here. So once again, the lick sounds like. Are you tired of watching a ton of YouTube guitar lessons and you don't really understand how it all ties together? Well, I think I have the solution for you. I'm the owner and guitar teacher at Guitar Me. I created my Guitar Me All Access membership to give you access to my online guitar courses, guitar riffs, licks, scales, triads, guitar tips, lead guitar, rhythm guitar playing, and whatever else you need to become a really good, well-rounded guitar player. If you're looking for some direction in your guitar learning journey, then I think I can help you over at Guitar Me. I put the link down in the description if you want to sign up or just learn more. <laughs> Thank you. 
So with this lick, I consider this out of A. I do have a G in it, so like that's a, that's a flat seven. So you could think of it as A mixolydian. Uh, I was really thinking of it as A major, just with a G in it, but you can think of it how you like. So I start with the, putting my pinky here on G, which is the flat seven. And then I have the root, which is A, and then D, which is the fourth. So I'm playing those three, and then I'm kind of coming back the scale. This is flat seven, six, five, four, three, and then down to one. So you get this. And the reason I, uh, I, I wrote this with uh, thinking of Little Wing. There's a section of Little Wing where he does something similar to this, and I thought it was pretty, pretty genius that he was taking... Instead of changing the note on top, uh, you know, and keeping the bottom note the same, he keeps the top note the same and then changes the bottom note. So that concept, I think you can use all over the neck. So that's why I specifically included this lick is just to get the idea, the concept of keeping a note on top the same and then the note on the bottom changing. So if I went down chromatically, Something like that. So I thought that was a, a really cool lick idea that he came up with in Little Wing. This is similar, but this is my own. And once you get the concept, you can create your own lick and make it your own. So for this lick, I'm considering this out of a minor. So I'm starting with an A minor bar chord and I'm going to a G G major bar chord uh, or one to flat seven. Um, so I'm going, I'm going coming down on one, one, then I'm scratching. And what I'm doing there is I'm taking this hand, my left hand here, and just lifting up. I'm playing the chord. Then I'm just lifting up on my fingers and then I'm just strumming uh, all the muted strings. So it's like going one, two, and three, four. And then I'm doing here, I'm doing triplets, eighth note triplets. And to me, I call this the kind of like the drizzle effect. Uh, I don't know why I think of that, but it's like they're kind of cascading down. It almost feels a little out of time because uh, you're going... Uh, I remember uh, learning uh, Jimi Hendrix solo and there was something I'm like, what did he just do? There was something that was super cool. And what was that feel? How's he, how does he make that feel like that? And then I, I, I checked it out. I listened to it. I'm like, they're just triplets. Um, so if you're playing something and like, if this is the beat, one E and a two E and a... Like that's what uh, the 16th notes feel like. So if you switch over from 16th notes to eighth note, triplets it has a whole different feel it kind of feels like it's cascading or tripping or drizzling i don't know why why i think a drizzle because i feel like sometimes he goes uh he just kind of goes where he's not even he's not even picking he's just kind of like drizzling down the neck is the way i think of it or uh however you want to think of it um and when you do that i think it's if you try it in perfect tune that's one thing but i think it's okay to I think it's okay to bend the notes a little bit, almost a little out of tune, and it really creates a little bit of chaos. Um, so that feeling, instead of just going like, like eighth notes, one and two and three and sixteenth notes, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Uh, if you're able to slip into those triplets uh, at some point, it really has a cool feel. So I'm going to go from eighth notes to sixteenth notes, and then into triplets. The, uh, and I love the way the triplets feel. If you listen to Jimi Hendrix, uh, he will put in triplets in there. It's a really cool feeling, and it really uh, it kind of makes it sound like a little off, uh, which is wonderful. Everything's just not per being played perfectly. Um, of course, you know you could argue everything he plays is perfect because he's a uh, incredible at guitar. Uh, but that that was my um, lick number five. Thanks for taking the time to check out these Hendrix-inspired guitar licks. If you enjoyed this lesson and you'd like to learn more about guitar, please consider subscribing to the channel. Here's another guitar lick for you to try.